Something I maybe I had tried to repress noticing before, and that is there comes a moment when it's obvious that I can't think of something to say, and I look over here at the timer, and then I'm kind of... But, anyway. <laughs> the, film that won't, the film that won't go away. Um, I'll <clears throat> begin with the obvious observation that um, I'm, the, that's, I'm not the only performer, that uh, I'm the performer on camera, but um, the, the, the camera operator and the sound recordist were both performers as well. And uh, each had a kind of, kind of timetable, <clears throat> and each turn his piece of equipment on and off um, at the appropriate moments. So uh, I performed continuously for 11 minutes, and the performance was recorded intermittently. So there was only 200 feet of film in the camera, but the camera was turned on and off, and the tape recorder was turned on and off. and. The, in post-production, I added spacer so that the, um, the various units were the uh, correct distance apart from each other. But it's not as if I, it's not as if there was a continuous performance um, and that I then eliminated, and then I created the lacunae in the cutting room. And I think the film tells you this anyway because when the tape recorder goes on, you get that little chirp, or is it when it when it gets turned off? Well, sometimes when it gets turned off, sometimes when it gets turned on. There's sometimes like a light frame at the end of uh, uh, a shot when the camera is slowing down, so you get um, a shot that's over. You get a frame or two that's overexposed in relation to the shot itself. Um, and I think the film offers two different views of the notion of hierarchy or relative importance. And what I say is that I regard sync as the fundamental case. I say that many, many times because I was improvising from notes and it was always something to say when I couldn't quite think of the next thing to say. <clears throat> so I say it, and the film embodies it by beginning with sync. Um, and indeed, sync is, is the fundamental case in movies. Not every shot in a future film is shot in sync. A lot of it is shot MOS, and then the sound is added. But nonetheless, the finished film, <clears throat> in its entirety, from beginning to end, emulates um, the paradigm of sync with the addition of music in almost all cases to double um, and underscore what we already see in the action so that movie music for the most part is in principle um, redundant. That's not to say there's anything wrong with it. It's just to say that it, it simply follows the model of sync but in a somewhat different register. <coughs> So, sync is privileged, and at the time I made this film, um, in the world in which I began, um, sync was regarded with suspicion, and the privileged mode was the silent film. And not only that, but there was a privileged piece of apparatus. There was a camera that was the politically correct kind of camera to have. And that camera was the Bolex, which, I mean, it makes me nostalgic just to even think of a Bolex, which in fact, I mean, Bolexes were made in, in Switzerland. Um, and if you had a Bolex, it was already a kind of credential. <clears throat> and I never owned a Bolex. I never, um, so I was suspect. 
And not only that, I made um, a film not just with sound, but with sync sound. Um, and not only that, but it attached itself to the industry through its terms. Um, Russia's, Sync, MOS, Wild. To explain about the derivation of MOS, um, there was a German emigre director who worked in Hollywood at the beginning of the sound era, and he would say, we will shoot this scene without sound. Hence MOS, and MOS, when you, when you slate a shot and it's, you're going to shoot it silent, you, you write MOS. No one thinks anything of it. And wild sound simply means that the sound is recorded with uh, a recorder that does not run at sync speed. And sync in the old days, uh, before the advent of crystal sync and cables, uh, sync cables and things like that, well, sync cables, then crystal sync. Um, sync was, I th I'm tempted to say, well, I will say it, sync was something of a miracle. Um, I would suggest, and I know that uh, others would disagree with me, I would suggest that movies wanted to be synchronous from the beginning, but they couldn't be only because of technical limitations. In fact, this was Edison's conception of uh, the form of movie that he invented. And um, specifically, he thought it would be a good idea if people could be you know, registered cinematographically and uh, with, with sync sound so that after they had died, they would appear before us um, as they were in life. This is what he wanted movies to do. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are people who would disagree with me, but I would claim that movies, in principle, always were sync. They wanted to be sync, and to the extent that they couldn't be sync in literal fact, they were sync in principle, which is why movie music um, is, the, is the way it is. Um, it simply, it, it tells us in another form what the image already tells us, which in principle is what sync is. Um, I mean, I know there are people who insist on showing silent films silent, and I, I can be puritanical and um, narrow in my own way, but I, I, I don't think that's correct. I don't think that that's true to what silent films were. But anyway, <clears throat> I made a film that is sync, at least one quarter of it is sync. Um, but to return to the question of hierarchy, it privileges sync, and then next, so to speak, is um, MOS, which is a picture without sound, and um, so what gets privileged is picture. The two cases that involve picture come first. And then comes wild sound, which suggests that in this, the higher, when, when, there, when, you have, when you have an order, when you have one thing after another, unless there are things that tell you to the contrary, I think we're put in the position of supposing that we're, that the order corresponds to their importance or their significance, so that so that there is, in fact, a hierarchy. And then, last of all, bringing up the rear comes the null case, which is the least privilege, except it turns out, I think, to be rather a rich case. Um, but on the other hand, so in one sense, there's a hierarchy, um, but on the, another sense, the film is exactly egalitarian in that um, even if we start with sync and that most of the sync occurs at the beginning, that each of the four cases occurs for exactly the same.